What's up everybody? My name's Mike. I'm gonna jump right into this. This is my lovely family, the wife and two, two oldest daughters on the left. There I am, old man. And my four girls, next to my sister and her two kids. Number five is my handsome son, served in the military for our wonderful country. A lot of you may know me as Easy from Easy Street Gaming. It's a gaming website, YouTube, all that good stuff. After 220 videos, this is the first time I've showed me. I showed my son longer because he's a lot prettier than me. Why I show myself after all this time? Well, I'm not going to hide what I have to say behind a gamer's name. So first, I'm going to show you the message that I sent after watching this very odd video. Then I'll explain how science and religion can live together. The video was on Flat Earth, by the way. What I understand is probably different than about 99% of everyone else's views out there. And you trust me on this, and you'll hear later. This is, the, this is what I wrote this guy. Hey my friend, I think the time and energy that you put into constructing this video was quite admirable. The video itself was well made and highly entertaining. I think you're a smart guy to see things in the manner that you do. As an additional point of reference, I think you would enjoy looking at the photos taken by the Hubble telescope while you're looking at them, contemplate on how they were taken from a satellite in low Earth orbit. I would also suggest that the specific calculations that make things like our TV satellites and others like the Hubble actually do their job. A good example would be our global positioning satellites. They work because we can factor very specific mathematical equations into the programming of the computers that receive data from these satellites. Some other calculations that I found fascinating are the exact distance that the eye can see. How much of the earth can we see with the naked eye? And then, if we elevate ourselves, let's say two or three hundred feet, how much more can we see of the earth? I think that people like you that are investigating the actual fibers of mankind's existence and questioning what we have been told turns an ordinary man into an intellectual man. Some of our greatest discoveries have come from people that simply ask why. Keep up the good work. Right or wrong may not be the important thing in the end. It could be the journey. That's important. Mike. I suck at reading. <laughs> so, sorry about all the words. I wanted anyone that wanted to listen to the audio, give them a voice, and everyone that wanted to just read it would have the words. That's going to change in a few minutes. Now, you guys got to stick with me for a few more minutes while I get through what I watched. I know this is kind of lame, boring, but uh, trust me, you want to you hang out. So, truth is, I kind of liked the person in the first video. Uh... I didn't agree with 95% of what he said, but teach their own. But I followed a link from his YouTube channel or his video to the next clip. And it was kind of a live feed because there was a chat room going on at the same time. And it might be upsetting to you, some of the stuff he was saying. Just be warned right now. I've left a link to his YouTube channel. There's a good chance some will have water, land, and breathable air. Oh, but so far we haven't found Earth's twin. And our telescopes don't have that kind of resolution that could tell us in detail what other exoplanets is like. Remember that. Their telescopes don't have any kind of resolution that could tell us in detail what any exoplanets is like. Okay, first of all, their telescopes are garbage. Now, we're let. I'm going to pause a bunch of times while he's in the middle of what he's saying just to give you my own two cents this guy is a christian he also believes in the flat earth and he believes that because this is in the bible that the earth is flat that it has to be flat he believes that only things in the bible are true and he's going to go off he's real eccentric and uh, we'll listen to some more and then i'll cut in in a few minutes to believe with their magical Hubble that they're seeing, you know, 14 billion miles away. And yet they can't see any type of resolution. Uh, well, maybe with Trappist-1. Trappist-1 is just pixelated garbage. But again, this is how they push their lie. They're so far away. Technology hasn't caught up yet. It is catching up rapidly. We are getting close. Pretty soon we're going to be able to see it. We're going to be able to discover the planet that has life. It's Earth 2.0. Isn't this wonderful? We're going off on a nice vacation. 
never to come back because again it's all a lie but again this is the propaganda this is the fear that they continually push to get us to buy into not only not only the entire big bang heliocentric cosmology and okay so i wanted to stop him right there you'll notice that whenever you meet someone that is trying to push a different version of what the truth might be they're going to try to attack everything that most people find common now again i'm going to get into this a little more but i just just watch the attacks that he that he places on everyone as if it's all one person one big conspiracy and the fact that there's other billions of earth 2.0s absolute complete nonsense but this utter lie that everyone has believed is moving towards some very very dangerous premises now now something else that he was going to do is he's going to try to explain and, and the reason this concerns me so much is I was watching the chat he's got a bunch of kids in the chat I could tell they're really young by what they're saying so this is a teacher he's teaching young people that everything they've heard is a lie from their government everything they've heard from the scientists are lies that they're all out to get them that they're to manipulate them for money it's a weird agenda so that's why oh, I'm making this. Getting into the fact that, well, now we have to do our part. We have to invest into space. We've got to really start, you know, slowing everything down, pay your carbon tax, and let's see how long we can keep this earth going. Understand that God created the earth that men are not going to destroy it. How complete pompous, how conceited, how high and mighty do you have to believe that you think that you, in your little minuscule power, you have nothing remotely close. Like, uh, next time you think technology or you think the military might of any country is powerful, just put that aside and think about a massive, massive forces of nature. Just think about a hurricane. Think about just anything to do with what we see that God in creation. Our power is just minuscule. And to think that we have all this power, oh, we have the power to destroy the world. I mean, think about that. Stop and think about how silly that sounds. We now, I wanted to stop here because what he's saying is ridiculous again um, for people that are Christian you have God's DNA in you uh, the things that you say can we, we have creative power and one person can influence many to do very destructive or very good things yet they have us believing this constantly over and over and over we are going to destroy the planet through our misgivings through our sins through our dealings this is what's happening we have to band together become part of the new world order let's march ahead let's do what's good for mother earth of course we would not ever want to upset mother earth i mean she's just so prized and so precious but yet mother earth is on her way out so now we've got to find earth 2.0 we've got to go throughout the galaxy give nasa your money it's almost as bad as a tv evangelist saying give me your money and you'll get a blessing it's like give us your money and we're going to save you and because they're becoming the saviors and i've brought this up before so many times with people I want to stop in there too he mentioned the new world order he mentions the illuminati just to clarify they are not scientific organizations these are elite banking organizations and conspiracy theorists as well so mixing in all of these different aspects and hiding behind a christian flag this is another problem that i have as we continue on i'll be praying for his family i know that's he was only 51 years old but tom horn chris putnam Derek gilbert here skywatch tv they do a lot of good research they, they give a lot of good things but in this past week, they came out against the Flat Earth teaching. And particularly Rob Skiba and some others, they, they've come against, they've fought. We've been trying to present the truth of Scripture on this. Okay? Um, that's why you see Israel bombs Damas Damascus and the Earth is round. <laughs> but this is a big mistake. There are Christians now beginning to... What, what's, what's happening with a lot of Christians? And I understand it. Look, I, I was deceived by NASA. And a lot of modern scientists, and I tried to fit it into what the Bible was saying as well. I tried to meld the two. But listen to me. I understand that there is some really knee-jerk reactions. And when you've been taught something your entire life, when you've been brainwashed and indoctrinated from a child, that the earth is a ball and that, you know, 
the sun's 93 million miles away and all this stuff we've been taught and then you start reading the Bible and finally when your eyes are open they're lying to us and we've been deceived I understand that's hard for some people so he mentioned that he understands or that he doesn't understand why Christians are going back and starting to believe that the earth is round again as if all Christians believe that the world was flat the reality is is that we all believe that the world is round not because it was in the Bible but because man has proved that over a, a long time ago this is a proven fact from a long time ago we're gonna get into that more in a second here so I've got the link to their channel I wanted to put the link to their channel so you guys can go check it out yourself and I don't know exactly what you want to do um, and and then we, then we just tell you right now arguing with most of these people are just going to have them recite different scripture to you and personally I don't like being attacked with different scripture that suits someone's needs I don't like someone telling me what God says and what his intentions are what he's thinking and all that in my opinion is wrong and that's what you're going to get a lot of from a lot of the people that are following this channel because that's what I saw when I was in the chat up in, in th to three of their live uh, pod podcasts even though they're recorded from 2017 <laughs> so what I've done is I've got just because I had to I just went out and grabbed a few pieces of what I would call evidence that and, and, and for me this is ridiculous because that I have to prove that the earth is round I mean that's ridiculous to me but here we go we'll start off with gravity uh, according to the flat earth there is no such thing as gravity that everything is there's no gravity and everything like, is held down by some electromagnetic current the problem with that is that there's no proof for any electromagnetic current that affects all things except for metal which is still affected by regular magnetics for us to somehow go have this immense source go undetected by all of our detection devices is insanity uh, now if there was gravity of course the flat earth wouldn't work because the center of the flat earth would have more gravity there's more mass and as you get towards the edge there would be much less gravity therefore it couldn't possibly be a stable environment like it is now so that's why the theory of gravity is thrown away it didn't it doesn't work in this model so they replaced it with something that is basically just made up uh, you can't just make up something there is no proof to this electromagnetic force that holds us all down to the flat earth that is something that is made up that is not real you can't dismiss away gravity because it was discovered a long time ago and apparently we can't reproduce the exact experiment that was done a long time ago so therefore gravity must not be real because it was discovered so long ago that we don't can't reproduce the original uh, experiment which is insane we have so many different things that depend on gravity it's a it's a law of nature it's a it's a law there's a law of gravity when you step out of a building on the fifth floor you fall down that's not an electromagnetic charge that you fall down because of it is because of gravity because of the mass of the earth that you fall this is something that's been proven but and it, it can't, it's not a conspiracy theory by NASA NASA didn't come up with gravity our government didn't come up with gravity there's no interested party that came up with gravity this is something that mankind discovered it is a human discovery of it's a scientific discovery it is something that's been proven over and over by scientific experiments everything from the apple falling from the tree Till current day now <clears throat> I know that I'm sure in the flat earth theory that all satellites are probably dismissed as fake an illusion something that's already been up in the sky floating debris but in reality we have many many private companies that send satellites up into the sky in order for them to stay up in the sky they have to 
do several things. We have to have make specific calculations to get satellites to orbit the Earth. In order for them to stay above the Earth, they have to be going somewhere. They can't just float. So, and I apologize to people already because this is going to seem like you're watching this and I'm insulting you because I'm talking and you're listening. This is not for you unless you think that the world is flat. So, we'll go into why satellite works. And, I, and I, if you believe in the flat Earth, then I'm, it's not even an insult to you because I'm not against people thinking again, uh, outside the box. But I'm just trying to prove a point here. Alright, so in order to have a satellite work and orbit the Earth... They have to be an exact distance from the Earth. They have to be going at the exact right speed, and they have to be going in a specific trajectory. These are all things that we've, it was trial and error, and we have come up with the exact measurements uh, that we have to implicate in order to get satellites into space and then orbiting around the planet, which can be seen with the naked eye from the Earth. And no, it is not a uh, a fireball floating around the earth or magic or uh, a star that's really close to the earth that just happens to be illuminating it is actually a satellite that we launched that we've had our eyes on that transmits information from its place back to us we drive our cars with them they're GPS satellites we watch television we communicate with each other with them companies like Dish Network have perfected the positioning of their TV satellites. They launch them into orbit, set them at the exact speed of Earth's rotation. This gives them a fixed position in the sky because they are traveling at a geosynchronous orbit at about 22,370 miles an hour. The satellite's exact speed actually varies a little bit. At the equator, it is going 4,200 42,164 kilometers an hour at that speed will go around the earth in exactly 23 hours 56 minutes and 4 seconds that is measured that was this is called an experiment where we sent a satellite around the world and it came back to us in that time now <laughs> there's a small problem with the flat earth when it comes to satellites if they're not orbiting the earth that means they're floating and if they are floating, that really just means they're falling. Because you have to have some kind of mechanical device to get something to hover or to get something to fly. Now, the way they have their model is that there is the magnetic north pole. And they are using the compass example saying that that we're navigating around the world in a, in a big giant circle because of the way a compass works and that we've all misunderstood how compasses work and we think we're flying east to west but we're just flying in a big giant circle so i'm assuming the reason that they believe that there are no such thing as satellites is because in the flat earth model all satellites we either have to rotate around the earth the same way that the sun and the moon rotate around the earth which is around the exterior or around like the rim of the earth which is what they think the sun and the moon rotate around the earth around like the rim or the white part that's there. I, I don't know. I don't know the exact way they believe it works. And I guess uh, in that theoretical model, model uh, if we had satellites, they would all come crashing down around the North Pole, which is where uh, the magnetic north is. So, I, honestly, I, I don't understand the way they think about this, or the way they even the way that would they would prove anything with that. All right, so they go back into biblical law and one of the things that i heard them they they really got stuck on was that all the stuff that they got was from the bible if it's not in the bible it's not real and they were flashing a uh, different they were flashing different uh things across the screen one of them was uh the storehouses um in the sky that that held the the sun that held the moon that held the the wind and i guess this was proof that the sun wasn't in the center of the solar system and that we weren't rotating on the sun uh, that we're in the center of the solar system we're in the center of the galaxy everything's rotating around us so 
and, and there and a lot of people and these are people that don't believe in the flat earth but they believe that the, every single word in the bible is true and there is a reason why you can take certain things that are not factual and and logically explain them uh, here's an example how would you explain something to your children when the questions answer is too complex for them to understand would you wait for them to get older and this could be explained with our civilization too let's go back to God explaining things to primitive man because you know back when men were in communication with God we were a primitive race and there would be no way he could explain some of the stuff that we know now back then got a link to a pretty awesome website it will explain a, the oldest that we know of person that discovered or was able to measure the earth it's it's awesome the way the way he did it i got the picture of him here because he doesn't look like he works for nasa at all that's not a spacesuit actually that's looks like a dress and sandals which is really popular back in the days of the bible <laughs> they were they managed to in back in primitive times they were able to to use shadow and we've all heard these stories that they, they stuck two sticks in the ground and they measured the shadows and they were a long ways away from each other and because the shadows were cast in different areas they were able to measure it and they were able to come up with the circumference of the earth and and how wide it is and they were amazingly close to what we will what we would calculate now with a supercomputer which as far as i know aren't involved in some kind of multi-government international worldwide conspiracy theory that at least half the world has to know about because that's how many people it would take to actually perform this kind of unbelievable conspiracy now they have they do have a theory on why <laughs> and, and how all of the seasons are the way they are with the way the sun rotates around the, or doesn't rotate but flies around in a circle around the the earth uh, but with the globular model it's a little easier to explain why things are cooler away from the equator and how they're hotter at the equator because it's actually a little closer to the sun they're saying that the sun is actually just a couple thousand miles away from the earth sometimes you have to see it to believe though we can see we can actually see further than the earth allows us to because of the curvature in the earth now we a lot of the flat earth people say well we've measured it we've measured it and you shouldn't we've seen 14 miles with the naked eye and, and the ship never disappeared on the horizon but and if you look in this picture now I'm sure that they'll say this picture is fake that this couldn't possibly be a real picture but this is actually a very famous picture of a very famous structure it's massive it's unbelievable actually if you look at it but it actually shows the curvature of the earth now part of being a believer is to do our very best to search out the truth the flat earth is a lie it was created because many people believe that we are lied to by our government and a lot of their agencies like nasa science is our way to measure explain classify to understand the world that we live in science might be the thing that proves the bible to the disbelievers people that attack the world with the word turn potential believers away from the Bible and away from God and there are too many distractions in the world as it is to create another massive problem like every government in the world is lying to us and we live on a flat planet this is creating a problem that doesn't exist uh, is, is all the governments uh, completely honest with us all the time I don't think we even need to answer that but we live in a, on an amazing planet for us to exist here everything every condition had to be perfect I won't get into too much about how awesome the world and the universe is but to think that people that believe in the flat earth theory ha they have to disregard every single thing that mankind knows about the known universe the known galaxy the solar system the planetary systems and they have to have this steady need to put themselves back in the center of the universe again 
So there's definitely some kind of an emotional attachment. There's definitely a, a motive for them to think like this because they have to disregard logical thinking that we've had for thousands of years. That's the only way I can I can logically explain why someone would invest their life in such a such a task as to try to prove the world is flat when there's just an overwhelming amount of evidence that it's not and most of the people that are saying that this evidence is wrong they're just ignoring things that are fact and disregarding things that are true saying they're hoaxes saying that it's a, con a, a conspiracy apparently our governments are so good at keeping secrets from us that they've kept the, the, the world is flat from us but they can't take a picture of the earth from space and make it con convincing enough that we can't figure out that it's a fake it doesn't add up it doesn't match up this th there's too many there's too many things that just me just thinking about this for an hour can prove that prove wrong just by my common knowledge I don't have to even go fly up into the up in the sky and look at everything with a balloon like they're saying I should because I know that when I watch a boat float away on the ocean it disappears into the water and that just right there tells me that the earth is round so anyway I do have a comment I left links to the website that I have took part in their chat so I had a message for them I wanted everyone that watches this to understand what I heard if you have to insult someone that's handicapped that has to use a mechanical device to talk because his handicap has taken away his speech and you mimic what he's saying and he talks like a robot talking about Stephen Hawking this guy was insulting him saying that he was looking down on the world because he has this magical box that he talks into that no one else has or whatever he was saying you're supposed to be a Christian but you're insulting someone that was handicapped because of how he was talking or because he had a theory that you didn't agree with you know Christians are supposed to be above placing judgment on everyone else We're supposed to love everyone and let God work out the rest this is this approach of attacking everyone around us and teaching these kids there were kids in this chat room I could tell by how they were texting and and the reactions that I was getting that these kids look to these people as teachers and they are teaching them these theories that a scholar would definitely be able to manhandle any evidence that they threw at them because it's either something they made up that they're theorizing and that they can't prove or they explain away because of an ex because of a, a conspiracy of things that are so far-fetched or a, a conspiracy that's been going on longer than civilization itself so you have to start weighing in the truth compared to the lies and I'm sorry but when you tell me that the reason why the world is flat is because we don't feel it moving I'm going to tell you that there's something called centrifugal force in that we don't feel it moving because we are on it and you can't tell me that if the earth is spinning one direction if we fly in the other direction we should be going twice as fast because the atmosphere that is on the earth is also moving the, your theories are so flawed because you don't have a fundamental understanding of the science behind everything and you're just taking shots in the dark because of how you're feeling trying to make yourself feel better feel safer so yes it is safer if you're sitting in the middle of the galaxy you're protected by God in a flat planet with a giant dome over it congratulations you're safe again but reality is much different reality is is that we're on a tiny orb in the middle of a giant cosmos and if you just can't deal with that it would be best probably suited for everyone if you seclude yourself more back in the dark ages because that's what you're asking us all to accept you're asking us all to accept dark age theories that we've proven that we go we've gone into space we've mapped the entire world 
from the satellites that supposedly don't exist. Well, didn't want to end up on too bad of a negative note, but but damn it. Uh, I had never thought in my life that uh, I would actually have to argue about a flat earth to anyone that has any type of intellect whatsoever. And these people sounded smart. And they were trying to really convince other people that were smart that everything you know is false. That the government's been lying to you. There's no motive. I don't. There's no motive to it whatsoever. In fact, all the individual pieces, anyone that would be in on this secret would have an enormous amount of personal gain to let this type of secret out. But no one's leaked it. They're all terrible at faking things. They can't take a picture from space or fake anything at all without these super intellects finding them out. But yet they've kept the biggest secret of mankind a secret from us all. Except for half the planet that's in on it. Sounds like insanity, uh, but I could be wrong. I could be eating my words, um, maybe fixing the dome 15 years from now. That'll be my punishment for speaking out against the flat earth is once it's proven that it's true, they'll make me go up, uh, I don't know, what, 75 miles in the air into this giant dome that stretches out the entire shape of the planet because that's even friggin' plausible. <laughs> I appreciate everyone that's been watching. I know this is not, for anyone that knows me, this is not, uh, a gaming video but I'm trying to get into more stuff and I figured this would be a great way to break into the real world by talking about the flat earth awesome appreciate everyone take care everyone